Welcome to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska. Today we're going to continue with the academic papers. And the academic paper uh, today is uh, written by Maya Gori. Its title is Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory, Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the New Macedonian Question. Now, this paper was published as part of the Hungarian um, Historical Review, uh, Volume 3, Number 2, in 2014, as part of the series called Fabricating History by Peter Apor, a special editor of the thematic issue. I'm going to present this paper to you in full. It'll be in three parts. So today we're going to start the first part, Maya Gori. And the title again is Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the New Macedonian Question. She starts off her paper by providing a quotation from Abby Warburg, which says, every age has the renaissance of antiquity it deserves. In the Republic of Macedonia, the use of archeology span to support the construction of national identity is a relatively new phenomenon but it has been steadily growing since the Declaration of Independence in 1991. In sharp contrast to the nation building process of the Greeks, Serbians and Bulgarians, whose main ideological components were drawn from a glorious past, in quotation, Macedonian nationalism in the mid 20th century looked to a, an equally glorious future. This paper analyzes the construction of popular archeology span in the Republic of Macedonia, and particularly the creative mechanisms driving it, its relation with the national and international academic world, its spread to a public of non-specialists through new media, its reception by society and its political utilization in constructing the national identity, says Maya Gori. In her introduction, she says the following. On May the 18th, 2009, 200 classical scholars sent a letter to the president uh, Barack Obama of the United States asking his intervention in what is today known as the new, new Macedonian question. The letter said, Dear President Obama, <clears throat> we, the undersigned scholars of Greco Roman, Greco Roman antiquity, respectfully request that you intervene to clean up some of the historical debris left in Southeast Europe by the previous US administration. We turn the page over. Uh, the letter proceeds to substantiate its, again, uh, we've got signatories cause with items of evidence obtained from ancient sources. The closing sentence calls for the direct intervention of Barack Obama in the matter. So they say, we call upon you, Mr. President, to help in whatever ways you deem appropriate the government in Skopje to understand that it cannot build a national identity at the expense of historic truth. Our common international society cannot survive when history is ignored, much less when history is fabricated. This paper 
analyzes the creative mechanisms that stand behind the construction of the archaeological discourse in the new Macedonian question through a comparative analysis of Greece and the Republic of Macedonia. In particular, it explores the scientific community's role in national identity, aiming to demonstrate that the use and appropriation of archaeological heritage is a complex and articulated process, which is conditioned by more than political agents alone at both the national and international levels. There is a complicated dialectic between archaeology intended as science, its popularization, popularization, the influence exerted by different interest groups, and the different cultural policies of the states involved. Old and New Macedonian Questions is the next title of this paper. What is Macedonia, asks the author. Can Macedonia be considered as a nation? The Macedonian question arose when the European powers signed the treaties of San Stefano, March 1878, and Berlin, July 1878, to resolve the 19th century power vacuum in the Balkans following the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire. These established new political and territorial uh, borders. Many ethnic groups embraced the Western idea of the nation state and its uh, concomitant secular identity to replace the Ottoman millet system, which granted collective rights to members of confessional groups. It is worth remembering that the term Macedonia was almost unknown within the Ottoman Empire, says the author. Western travelers, cartographers and politicians, however, regularly used it to refer to the region after the Renaissance, and it was uh, re-adopted for local use by the Greeks in the early 19th century. Following the First and the Second Balkan Wars, this is 1912-1913, most of the broader Macedonian territory was divided between Greece, Bulgaria and Serbia. In 1918, after the First World War, the territory of the modern Macedonian state became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. In 1944, with the victory of the partisans over the Bulgarians and the Germans inside, mass support for the new partisan movement triggered off a nation building process, says the author of this academic paper. The mobilization efforts and mass responses led to the constitution of the Macedonian Republic within the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The Communist Party provided the basic preconditions for the mod uh, Macedonization, she calls it Macedonization, of part of Vardarska Banovina, encompassing the whole of today's Republic of Macedonia, southern parts of southern and eastern Serbia, and southeastern parts of Kosovo. It did so by mobilizing large segments of society through political, ideological, and national claims that relied mainly on the language as the most important means of identity construction. Heritage and archaeology did not become an important element within the Macedonian nationalist discourse until the 1970s. Archaeology first came to prominence after the drafting of the 1974 constitution, which articulated the importance of a specifically ethnic Macedonian identity. In the decades that followed political and historiographical contro controversies over Macedonia colored the relationship of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia with its neighbors. In particular, different constructions of the ethnogenesis and formation of the South Slavs in the Macedonian region from prehistoric times until the present were made by political propagandists and professional 
historians in Athens, Belgrade, Sofia, Thessaloniki, and other places. These arguments diverge so fundamentally as to be mutually incompatible. I'll just remind you that you're watching uh, In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska, and we are continuing our academic papers on the Macedonian question. This time, we are um, uh, presenting to you Maya Gori and her academic paper uh, titled Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the New Macedonian Question, a paper which was published in 2014 in the Hungarian Historic Review. So um, at the same time as a Macedonian nationalist archaeology was emerging, Greek national archaeology is also begun to make or to take more interest in the subject of Macedonia. The sensational finds at the excavation of the great tumulus at uh, Vergina in 1977 attracted considerable attention and raised the profile of the Macedonian dynasties of Philip III and Alexander within the Greek nationalist discourse. The significance of archaeology in the nationalist discourse of Macedonia became even greater after the collapse of Yugoslavia and the establishment of an independent Macedonian state in 1991. This gave rise to a new Macedonian question. Once again, Bulgaria and Greece challenged the legitimacy of Macedonian nationhood, although Bulgaria, unlike Greece, recognized the Republic of Macedonia. Hmm. In Greek protests, Alexander the Great um, was deployed as a king of super Greek. Super Greek is in quotation by the author of the paper. A super Greek hero against what was regarded as the theft of Greece's heritage by non-Greek people. The Macedonian king became the symbol of the Greek historical argument summed up in the slogan, in quotations, Macedonia is Greek, uh, was Greek, and always will be Greek, end of quotations. Some scholars see the new Macedonian question as a resurgence of the old one. The role of archaeology and heritage in this new contemporary phase, however, is far greater than it was previously. Indeed, archaeology is absolutely central to the political debates surrounding contemporary Macedonian identity, both within and outside the borders of the independent Republic of Macedonia. At international political level, a particularly important focus point is the continuing dispute over the name of the new state. Let me remind you, this paper was written in 2014. Okay. The name Macedonia, in quotations, is contested between the Republic of Macedonia and the Greek region of Macedonia. Most other countries continue to use the official name Phyrum, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, to designate the independent post-1991 state, although the name Republic of Macedonia is being used always more frequently in journalism, sport, etc., says the author. The debate has particularly come to the fore since the mid-2000s as a result of accession talks between the Republic of Macedonia mm -hmm, the European Union and NATO. A vocal campaign was launched on the Greek side, making conscious use of archaeology and heritage with local and international academics joining politicians to support Greek's claim or Greece's claim. The Republic of Macedonia has similarly, similarly mobilized archaeology and heritage to pursue a policy of antiquization. Archaeology is also significant in the construction of narratives of national unity and cohesion in the Republic of Macedonia. Despite remaining at peace through the Yugoslav wars, the country was seriously destabilized by the conflict in Kosovo. And there was a subsequent armed clash between Albanians and the Macedonian police in the Albanian populated areas of the country. The Albanian minority in the Republic of Macedonia 
represents a substantial 35% of the population, says the author of this academic paper. Albanian demands in Macedonia range from greater use of the Albanian language in higher education to the secession of regions with high Albanian population. Noteworthy is the increasing importance of Muslim religious affiliation as an identity marker in the Albanian community in opposition to the mainstream Macedonian identity, which although currently constructed primarily on the basis of the archeological discourse, focusing on antiquity and Alexander the Great, also draws on the Orthodox religion. Archaeology, national identity and modernity. There has been substantial research into the relationship between archaeology and nationalism. Early research into the topic explored the interaction between archaeology and the state. The groundbreaking 1995 volume edited by Cole and Fawcett demonstrated beyond doubt that archaeology is a politicized discipline. The book focuses on the influence of nationalism and professional standards of behavior and research traditions within the discipline. One of its arguments is that the misuse of archaeological evidence can be avoided by following scholarly standards and that it is absurd to assert that there are no empirical limits to the manner in which archaeologists can responsibly interpret their data. An appropriate point of view on the relation of nationalism to archaeology is expressed by M. Dyer's uh, Andre and T. Champion. They argue that there is no such thing as non-political, value-free archaeology. Archaeologists have underestimated the relationship between nationalism and archaeology. Nationalism stimulated the very creation of archaeology as a science and has informed the organization and infrastructure of archaeological knowledge. The relation is based on the concept of the nation conceived as the natural unit of a human group, which by its very nature has the right to constitute a political entity. Dias Andre and Champion argued that the simple existence of nations implies the existence of a past, which should be known and propagated, converted de facto, the production of nation's history, into a patriotic duty. Why Hamilakis, following Thomas's reflection on archaeology and modernity, refines Champion and Dias's positions, arguing that the study of the link between archaeology and nationalism is not a study of the abuse of the first by the second, but of the development of a device of modernity and that archaeology is an autonomous discipline uh, as an autonomous discipline serves the needs of the most powerful ideology of that modernity, that is the nation state. Hamilakis criticizes Cole and Fawcett's ob uh, objectivist positions, which sees nationalist readings of the past as distortions from an objective truth and uses concepts like metahistory and usable past to refer to those segments of history and archaeology that are selectively assembled by modern individuals, modern individuals to weave narratives that support specific political goals. He asserts that archaeology has to be viewed as cultural product, cultural product rather than as a pursuit of truth. The diversity of readings of the past should be seen as a phenomenon which can function as a mirror for the self-reflexive uh, critical re-examination of the discipline as a whole. In criticizing the positivist approach, Hamilakis argues that in the attempt to condemn an ideology of exclusion, new boundaries are reproduced by constructing the knowing subject, the holder of objectified knowledge who condemns the rational other, uh, orientizing thus the producers and the followers of nationalist myths set against the rational and scientific West. 
In the modernist view, archaeologists uh, or archaeology are believed to have the potential to reveal profound truths below the surface concerning the origin and history of current nation states. Significant concepts like appropriation and of ethnicity can be then used to examine the relation of archaeology to identity building through a constructive approach based on false uh, souls argument that the will to truth, will to truth is in quotations, is the major system of exclusion that forges discourse which ends to exert a sort of pressure and sometimes like a power of constraint uh, on other discourses. What is at stake is the will to truth um, in the will to utter this true, in quotations, discourse, if not desire and power. In the Western world, archaeologists perceive themselves as officially entitled by society at large to use archaeological material as resource for understanding the cultural past in pursuit of the truth. Nicholas and Weil argue that in their combined roles of scientists and self-identified stewards of the past, archaeologists have long enjoyed considerable privilege of access and authority in determining how archaeological materials should be used, by whom and for what purpose. Indeed, Nicholas and Weil's argument demonstrates that archaeology as a discipline is inherently a practice of cultural appropriation, at least in a significant majority of the contexts where it has become established as a professional research enterprise. Even if scholars play an important role in articulating archaeological narratives, however, they have far less control over the patterns of appropriation than they commonly assume. The vision of the past that emerges in analyzing the dynamic nature of appropriation of the past as an intentional process whose mechanism affects social change is that uh, uses of the past have to be considered as pointers to competing visions of the future at both individual and group levels. Scientific archaeology also adopts such a vision. Parallel and apparently opposite to the concept and mechanisms of appropriation is the move toward a global and globalized archaeology. The debate on the notion of appropriation and ownership, the role of a globalized scientific archaeology, and the impact of archaeological projects on local com communities occupy an important place in the relation of archaeology and politics. National archaeology and heritage are under pressure through cultural processes of internationalization and globalization, and both archaeology and other types of heritage are increasingly regarded as a legacy, not of an eternal human experience, but of a certain type of European modernity. The phenomenon of globalization and the paradox of monuments being simultaneously of national and global significance, at least for the Western imagination, are also symptoms of dynamic change in the Western conception of cultural heritage. This conception, however, is rooted in the revival of antiquity that characterized the 18th century age of enlightenment and continued into the 19th century laterally competing with romanticism. We will end part one um, at uh, this point and continue with part two in our next video. I want to remind uh, you all that um, this is the uh, series dedicated to the academic papers which have been published on the Macedonian question and this particular paper that I've presented to you today is by Maya Gori, titled Fabricating Identity from Ancient Shards, Memory Construction and Cultural Appropriation in the New Macedonian Question, a paper published in the Hungarian Re uh, Historical Review, volume three, number two, 2014. 
thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, for the second part, which will follow a suit shortly. Silvana Pavlovska wishing you a pleasant day.